As defined by law, cultural heritage refers to the totality of cultural property preserved and developed through time and passed on to posterity. Cultural property refers to all products of human creativity by which a people and a nation reveal their identity. These include churches, mosques, and other places of worship, schools, and natural history specimens and sites, whether public or privately owned, movable or immovable, and tangible or intangible. In this series of lectures, esteemed educators from our national university lend pertinent discussions, thus open academic discourses on Philippine cultural heritage relating to their respective fields of discipline and expertise. These can and may be used as resource materials for further learning and study. Philippine cinema guru Ed Gabagnot underscores the vital role of Filipino films as effective media to depict our culture and identity as a nation and as a people. Films showcase the four main elements of culture, which are symbols, language, values, and norms. He shares with us his insights on one of the most well-loved Filipino films of all time and his personal favorite, Biaya ng Lupa. Natutuwa ako na inibitan niyo ngayong araw na to para pag-usapan isa sa pinakamahal kong pelikula sa buong mundo. It's a pleasure to be here uh, with you so I can share with you my insights concerning what I feel is the finest Filipino film ever made. At uh, hopefully nga after this session, you yourself will see that it is a fine film at magkakaroon kayo ng interes para mapanunto at magpapag-usapan kung anong sinasabi niya tungkol sa ating pagiging Pilipino. So usually, gusto kong itanong sa mga estudyante ko kung ano yung mga pagulito nilang pelikula. And, uh, you know, most of the time, they would give me a list of answers. Pero kung ako ang tatanungin nyo, mas mahirap para sa akin kasi bata pa lang ako, mahilig na ako malunong pelikula. But if I answered it, and I gave you my top 10, this would be my top films. So nakikita mo na gagaling siya from all over the world, hindi lang European, hindi lang Filipino, hindi lang siya bago, hindi siya lumap. Pero syempre, hindi pwedeng pag-usapan ng top uh, 10 films without talking about my favorite film of all time, Biyaya ng Lupa. Okay. So these are just a few. Question, what do these films have in common, especially the last film I talked about? Well, each one is a well-crafted work. That's uh, cinematically amazing and driven by the vision of a filmmaker. So nakikita niyo yung laman, no? Kwento, paano na kwento, at yung vision na gusto sabihin ng filmmaker tungkol sa tao, mundo, at umay. So each of them, you know, would be something that all film students should be watching. So, what's your favorite Filipino film of all time? When Lino Broca was alive, and Ishmael Bernal was a, were a lion. Pag tinatanong sila itong tanong na to, they would not answer with these films. They would not mention any of their films. Okay? They would always, in unison, say it's, of course, a film we're discussing today. Biyaya ng Lupa is special on so many levels. Okay? And for so many reasons. Uh, let's just talk about... Um, some of the items, I think it's very important. This was made in an era na 1959, ang lahat ng pelikula noon ay puro genre films, either romantic comedies, horror, action, or adventure films. That's number one. And number two, puro mga bida na mistiso-mistisa ang mga uh, lead names sa mga pelikula noon. And number three, 
Yung mga kwento na napaka-simple, it's a poor girl who gets married to an older guy, etc., etc., and all of that. No? And uh, the storyline, unfortunately, is very predictable. But Biyaya ng Lupa seemed to have exceeded all of that. This was made at a time na, you know, it was a big risk for LDN Pictures. It was not meant really to make money, but I think the people behind the film wanted to show this, wanted to create this film para patunayan nila that the Philippines can make its own heritage film. Number two, yung mga artista ng Biyaya ng Lupa were not the big name stars. They were not even the mestizos or mestizas of the era. They were actually character actors. And the funny part is, Rosa Rosal, who plays the most important role in the film, started as a contrabida. She was the other woman, she was the bitch, in all of the films previous to her roles, but it seems like Rosa Rosal found her niche in Philippine history as the one who portrays all the important LDN roles in its classic films. And then of course, makikita natin ba, I'll be showing you a lot of uh, you know clips, na story-wise, this was a very strange movie. Kasi yung contrabida niya, and I'm talking about Bruno, is not a typical contrabida na, you know, black or black and white. Bruno is presented as somebody who has all the tones of gray. And then, of course, finally, technically, Biaya na Lupa is amazing. But maybe I should just shut up and show you what I'm talking about. Biaya na Lupa was made in 1959, and today, uh, around 50 years after, it still does not fail to impress or surprise people, as I'll show you in this next scene. Sa susunod na eksena na to, I've shown this film all over the Philippines, I've shown this in different countries, and everywhere that I've shown it, audiences clap when they watch this scene. And I'm talking about something that happens in the very beginning of the film, where Maria and Jose, they just got married, uh, they're about to go to town and look what happens to the caravan. Jose, hindi ba ngayon madadalhin yung kariton at kalabaw sa mga nanay? Diyan nga pala, no? O sige, dalhin mo na. Baka mainit na sila, eh. Ako na bahala riyan. Nakita niyo sa eksena na yun. It's something that still surprises young people, even in this day and age, na may karabaw na, hindi yan CGI yun, na That's a real karabaw that actually uh, yoked uh, uh, himself. Okay? So, Biyayan ng Lupa is full of all of these surprises. Okay? And I'd like to show you another scene that highlights the technical expertise of the filmmaker. The filmmaker is none other than Manuel Silos. Hindi siya kasing kilala, katulad ni uh, Jerry De Leon or Lamberto Avellana or uh, the other uh, national artists for film. But Manuel Silos was known as the technical craftsman of all the filmmakers. And if you watch the film, at mahilig kayo sa cinematography, you would see that he is an expert when it comes to framing, lighting, and camera movement. I'd like to share with you one scene which I again found very surprising. Uh, this is the part nung nagkaanak na si Jose at si Maria, but instead of showing us na nabuntis na naman si Rosa Rosal, uh, na may hirot na naman at nagkaanak sila, he, does, he shows us a visual that's so creative that talks about the growth of a small family. 
So if, let's look at the shot I'm talking about. Ay, pinasal ko ito si Miguel Sabayan. Arturo! Arturo! Mm, gigisingin mo naman ang bata eh. Tatay na tatay ang itsura. Puto! <laughs> Ayan, nagising na. And it's done using visual language. What's amazing there also is nakita din natin na hindi naman maligaya lahat eh. Nung itinanganak si Carmen, you would hear the lullaby on the background. And by the way, yung nag-compose ng music ng lullaby is none other than our national artist for music, si Lady Silerio. So habang kinakanta, yung Rosa Rosa, yung Meme na Bunso, iglas ang sisigaw, Pause. And all of a sudden, beside the name of Carmen, you see a cross. That's an excellent example. Semiotics. You know, a symbol that the second daughter was not delivered, you know, successfully. And then finally, pinanganak yung bunso, si Jose Lito. What's amazing about Biyaya ng Lupa's invention is not just what it does, what it tells us about the family, but it shows us the growth the village of Santa Monica. Santa Monica is not any real place in Luzon, Visayas, or Mindanao. It's a fictional, a fictional place that can be anywhere. Okay. But what's amazing about the film, aside from telling us tungkol sa buhay ng isang pamilya and their relationship to the land, it talks about the importance of society. And in the Ayan ng Lupa, pinakita niya na ang society would have its good side and a bad side. I want to show you a series of shots that talk about how Philippine society was depicted in this film. Let me show you first the good side. When Jose and Maria first get married, it's the whole village who celebrates the marriage, as we shall see in this video.
that celebratory opening of the Ayana Nupa. A lot of uh, dramatic and traumatic things happened to the family of Jose and Maria. Sa eksena nito, makikita natin na kung ano man ang nangyari sa kanila, hindi sila nag-iisa. In fact, throughout the film, you will see that they are not alone, that the community comes to their aid in so many ways. In this scene, Bruno, who has become a force of evil, has uh, stalked the family too much. And in this scene, sabi nga ng Teniente del Barrio, lahat kayo ay magkaroon ng kalato, which shall be the hudyat, just in case the tulisans and Bruno come back to the village. Very, what you call this? Very collective uh, thinking, right? Hindi katulad ngayon. Everybody seems to be, you know, drowning in their own Facebooks. And you can see everybody here takes the situation seriously. And near the end of the film, lahat ng dinaanan ni Jose and Maria, even though they are not together anymore, but I'm not going to spoil the film for you, uh, comes around. Okay? And when we started with the celebration of the wedding, we have now the celebration of the harvest. After 20 plus years, uh, the family of Maria and Jose finally reap the success of their planting. But I want to show you this next scene which is so progressive, you know, for 1959. Sa eksena na ito, ito nasa gitna pa ng Yung pamilya ni, ni, ni Rosa Rosal ay sa salakay na naman ni Brun. Okay? But in this scene, all the men, makikita nyo, ay umakit ng bundok para hanapin yung mga tulisan. So lahat ng lalaki nasa bundok, hinahanap si Brun. Pay attention to what's gonna happen next. Okay? So all the men, Beautiful shot, up to the very end, makikita mo. Okay. They're trying to find where Bruno hides. We cut to the family again. So it's just the mother, the daughter, and Lito. Guess what happens? All of a sudden, we see Bruno attacking Maria. Remember, all the men are in the mountains. Okay. So what happens is, Lito, right kid as he is, runs out of the house while he's being chased by one of the men of Bruno. And si Bruno, ang gusto niyang nakawin, ang gusto niyang kidnapin si, ano, si Angelita. And this shot is actually stolen from horror of Dracula. When Dracula approaches Lucy, and, you know, we just see close-up of Lucy, and when he waves his hand, watch this, she faints. But this is done as a tribute to this. So dito, makikita mo kinagana ni Bruno, si Angelita, and as he's about to escape from the house with the daughter, guess what happens? All of a sudden, you hear the sounds of women screaming or running. So the men are in the mountains, but all the women come to the aid of Maria and uh, the family. Remember, this is 1959. Years before the idea of feminism ever entered the minds of people. That's how progressive the Ayala Lupa was. But the Ayala Lupa was not just progressive when it came to the feminist issues. No. Uh, the eldest son, as we shall see in this scene, is a special child. So the film, despite the fact that it was made in 1959, gave us a very, very nice look at how people looked at people with disability. So, si Miguel, pinanganak, pero walang sumigaw. So, nagulat yung mga tao. Bakit? Kung pinanganak na siya, bakit wala kami narinig ng niiyak na bata? Okay. And the people are saying, ah, baka si Miguel, uh, naturally, mabait na gentle na tao. No? It turns out, and you will see the next scene, that he is a specially able individual. So, nakalipas na ang ilang taon, tumanda na yung apat na magkakapatid, and in the sequence, one early morning, we see the dynamics between the three young sons. And here we find out that Miguel 
cannot speak, but he can hear. And the second brother, the second son, Arturo, tells the mother, Bakit po pinapabaya ang maging spoiled si Miguel? And the mother says, may kapansana ng kapatid mo. So you see that in this film, the way they treated people with especially abled abilities was very, very enlightened. But at the same time, hindi niya pinapakita si Miguel na kawawa. In fact, a lot of the most uh, uh, heartening scenes of the island lupa were centered upon the relationship between the two brothers. So here, they play with the kalato, but when, we, when Miguel plays with the kalato, he can't hear a thing. Okay. Manuel Silos was an amazing director, especially in this scene where the three men, the father, Miguel, and Arturo, set off to the mountains to look for Bruno. What's amazing in this scene is, ang naglalakad yung tatay at si Arturo, you can hear the jungle, you can hear the insects, you can hear the wind, you can hear the birds. But when it cuts to Miguel, pay attention. So dito maririnig natin yung mga hangin, yung mga ibon, etc. Okay? But when it cuts to the specially abled son, When it cuts to Miguel, we can't hear any. Manuel Silos was a creative master, not just of visual language, but the use of sound design. Patay na natin yan. Mataba na eh. Wag, ito lang mga aliwan ko dito sa bundok eh. Paano malay mo, baka balang araw magkaroon ng sisiw yan? Paano magkakasisiw yan? Wala na mga kachaw. <laughs> Edi manok ka. Bro! 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 Sino sa palagay mo? Hindi ko makinala eh. In this other instance, makikita natin yung timeliness ng bihay ng lupa. Of course, wala na silang ama. The eldest son, who is not specially able si Arturo, is left to take care of the fields. Dito sa eksena na to, naiisip niya yung kinikwento sa kanila ng isang tega Santa Monica who made it big in Manila. And all of a sudden, umasok sa isip niya na siguro naganda ang buhay niya if he went to the big city. So despite the fact that it's 1959, the Ayan and Lupa still re-echoes a lot of the things that's still happening to the Philippines nowadays. The idea na kikita ka ng ginto sa Maynila at kailangan mong iwanan ang mas simpleng buhay mo sa Pilipinsya. So in this scene, Arturo tells his mother that he wants to go to Manila and see his fortune. Gusto ko naman ang sanang pumunta ng Maynila at nang makakita na ibang kapalaran. Biglang-bigla naman niya tayo naisip mo yan. Hindi o inay. Ang totoo niya niya. Nasabi ko na sa ito yan, opa. Ikaw lamang naman ang aking naasahan dito sa bukid. Nandiyan naman o ang kuya Miguel eh. Dapat hindi napatulungin. What's amazing again for me when it comes to the film Biyaya ng Lupa is the way it treats its characters. As I mentioned earlier, the antagonist Bruno is not drawn in black and white. In fact, napakaganda ng story arc ni Bruno. If there's anything that Biyaya ng Lupa has taught me, it's always to make all your characters believable by giving them as many sides as possible. In this scene, we are first introduced to Bruno. Si Bruno, gusto niyang ligawan si Choleng, played by a very young Mira, Mira Santos. Okay. Sa eksena na to, makikilala natin si Bruno. Ililigawan niya si Choleng, who is an ordinary village lass, but she is so terrified of him takot takot ka because of the rumors that Bruno caused the death of his wife. In this scene, Jose and Arturo defend Choleng, and they tell Choleng not to be unfair, and that Bruno may just be the victim of thousands. So you will see sa eksena na to, the people, despite the fact that they believe some people are evil, some of them are willing to defend those who are oppressed. 
So this scene, we see Bruno talking to his barkada while they're drinking at the Sari Sari store. At habang sila ay nag-uusap, sasabihin niya yung kanyang sama ng loob kung bakit lahat ng babae sa Santa Monica ay takot sa kanya. But nobody wants to tell him that it's because inakala nilang siya ang pumatay sa kanyang namatay na asawa. Again, we are shown a picture of the village, which is the opposite of the nurturing, supportive community, but could be the source of a lot of tension and stress, and as we see, the tragedy of the whole film. At kung lapitan ko, nagsisila yun. Bakit? Bakit? So dito natin makikita ang turning point sa story arc ni Bruno. One day, while Choling goes off to make her laundry, this is what happens. Gusto lang siya ang kausapin ni Bruno. Unfortunately, Choling, bakit ka matatakot sa akin? Hindi naman ako masaya. Layan ba ka? Marangal ang hangaring ko sa'yo, Choling. Choling falls to her death. So this is all an accident. But a witness to the whole situation, another villager who was doing her, her laundry, interprets this as otherwise. So let's just look at the scene. Bruno is devastated. Namatay or nabulog sa pangit yung kanyang minamahal. The onlooker, okay, instead of helping out, runs to the village and starts telling the community and she saw Bruno si Choling, pushing the girl down. Ha? Uh-huh. Eh, bakit itutulak yung mahal na mahal niya yun? Ewan ko! Kausap niya yung tingyente. Ipwento niya na tulak ni Bruno. Nalaman niyang patin eh. Tinalan sa kanyang bahay. Eh, bakit mo nalaman? Sinundan ko mo eh. Rome! And in the next scene, Rome! We see her running to the family of Choling. But this time, her, her words are, Pinatay ni Bruno ang anak mo. It's a very nice example ano? of how the rumor mill can actually devastate And I think it's also very timely, especially in this day and age of fake news, bots, alternative facts, that when it comes to mass media, and rumor is a mass media, that we are still affected by all of this. In this scene, Bruno has run to the mountains after he's been run out by the village. But the beautiful thing about the story of Bruno is that hindi siya masamang tao, period. Dito papakita sa atin na si Bruno cares for his men. Okay? He is like the father and mother to the people who run after him. And here, a, this is a very important scene wherein Bruno Here's the reports from his men. Na yung mga tao sa Santa Monica, ang tigil sa kanya, isang kalimaw, pinatay si Choling, etc., etc. And Lala listen to ko. what Bruno tells us. Bukod sa inyo, ito ang pinakamatapat kong kasama at pinakamalapit sa aking puso. Malaki ang maitutulong ito sa pagiganting gagawin ko sa mga tagabaryong umapisa. Alam mo, ang lahat ng babae sa ating ngayon, ang may kalat ng balita, na itinulak mo rin sa bangay ng Iosawa, kaya namatay. Tingnan mo nga naman. Kaya mo rin, ginawa yun ay dahil sa paniniwala mo, pinagtatak sila kanya. So, in the meantime, Manuel Silos, Taxi Rizzo, Shots, and Bruno is running to the village. 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 Bruno is running to the
The next scene is the first one. As I mentioned, ko. may be evil in the eyes of the villagers. Pero Manuel Silos shows us a lot of these scenes na nag-aalaga siya ng katsyaw. Can you imagine? The murderer of the village is the nurturer of, you know, of his uh, pets. So nakita niyo, sa biyaya ng lupa, napaka-fair ng treatment in the narrative about its characters. There's nobody who's completely black. There's nobody who's completely white. Biyaya ng lupa is all this and more. An amazing story at the heart of an excellently crafted film. As we end this talk today, I will show you some of the shots that typify how Manuel Silos wanted to show and share with us his idea of a Filipino family living in close relationship with the land. It's almost as if these were shots taken from an Amor Solo painting. But what's important with this scene is, as we see them preparing for a very nice lunch, and as the music of Silos and the and as they share their brief banter about how the day's work came about, when they start to eat, the music becomes religious. And for a few seconds, we are deep into their prayer. Biaya ng Lupa is an amazing film because it encapsulates a lot of what we call Filipino values that seem to have transpired, though it does not exist in our modern days. All throughout the film, you will see scenes of religion, family, and their relationship with the land. Religion plays a very important part in the telling of the story of Jose and Maria. And if you watch the film, again using visual language, you will see that each of the major scenes are framed so that you have a religious icon behind most of the characters as they go about the drama of their lives. I hope you enjoyed today's uh, adventure into a classic film, Biaya ng Lupa. Itong pelikula na to ay napaka-importante. Okay? Because, as I mentioned many times throughout the presentation, ang dami nang nagdaan between 1959 and the era that we live now. The beauty about film is that it's not just a document of the past, but it's a constant reminder the values that we have to continue to instill in our contemporary lives. Biaya ng Lupa is still relevant. It's a very timeless piece that talks to audiences, all ages, all walks of life, and from different points of view, even political situations. The relationship of Maria and Jose to the land is as valuable to us now as it was in the late 50s. The idea of community and how a community can be our salvation. And as in the case of Bruno, Papano community can also lead you down the dark side. It's still very much alive. And then the idea of Miguel as a specially evil person who is still valuable and can still be valued was, was, was shown in Biaya ng Lupa. And again, importante sa akin yung how they treated Bruno and how they show that every individual, no matter how dark his intentions are, can still be an important person worth the respect. Phil, as a source cultural heritage is a very important tool. And it's not only an important tool. I think it's the tool that young people the most are easily, easily uh, embracing. I mean, it's harder for me to invite a person to, let's say, uh, watch an opera show or maybe even attend uh, a Philippine Philharmonic Orchestra uh, uh, performance. But when I ask people, manutay ng sine? Usually, the answer is 100%. That is the value of film. It does not only entertain you, but at the same time, it reminds you of who we are 
and what's crucial about Biyaya ng Lupa and all the other Filipino films done by the Brocas and the Bernal is that they gave us a slice of what we call a Filipino experience. And you, as a future filmmaker, ang tanong ko sa inyo, how will your film complete this idea of the Filipino experience? Thank you very much. Network of Abnot, University of the Philippines Film Institute, maraming salamat po.